We just started flying airplanes a little over 100 years ago, and here we are. With the dawn of the billionaire space race, we are seeing the first days of an economy that actually exists in space. That begs the question of what happens when money needs to be transacted in space from an individual living in space or working in space to another individual living and working in space. Right now, that transaction would have to go down to the Earth and back, which is fine if you're in a low Earth orbit, like the International Space Station, a little less fine if you're on the moon, and not fine at all if you're on Mars, where it can take 20 minutes, 30 minutes, or more for a transaction to go back, and then that time again to go forth. This isn't like a theoretical problem. I had a chance to speak with astronaut Scott Kelly, um, and he talked about buying a dozen roses for his wife one day, and the incredible difficulties he had just getting an internet signal in space, that he, he was able to do very, very basic banking if he was incredibly patient, but that anything more sophisticated than a simple transfer was really untenable. So I think that really starts to open up this world where what happens when the first structure is built on the moon? What happens in the world that Elon Musk has envisioned where there's 10,000 people living on Mars by the middle of this century? What happens in the world where others have envisioned millions of people living on Mars by the end of this century? We're not going to want those transactions to have to travel the great distance to Earth and back. We also have an interesting opportunity here because there are no economies uh, on these other planetary bodies, including the moon and, and Mars. And it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to spend a currency that is minted by a central bank that only has power within existing borders. It would be like trying to print a dollar in Japan or like trying to print a peso in China. It just doesn't make sense. So why would we be spending dollars on Mars? What I think is most interesting about the idea of this interplanetary space economy is that the countries that are minting the currency that we're spending today are by definition not on those planets. And there are regulations in place already today that say if you put a flag on a planet, um, that doesn't mean that you own the planet or even the land around that flag. It's a, it's a fun gesture. And the same international agreements will exist on Mars. Why not imagine the way economies work on these interplanetary bodies? There's so many problems with the central bank system. We've seen it uh, in the headlines time and time again, simply just inflation, but exchange rates, foreign exchange transaction problems, delays, countries that don't trust each other, central banks that are committing fraud against their citizens. Why not reimagine that? We don't destroy ourselves. Absolutely, someday we will have the need for currency in space, uh, whether it's an uh, orbiting hotel or something on the moon or something on Mars. You know, it just makes sense that it's crypto, right? Because it's not, you know, a fiat currency from any particular government. These so-called blockchains or distributed ledgers really only work on relatively short distances. Because of the time it takes light to move from one side of the earth to the other, our financial transactions can move at about that same speed. And that's fine if you're on the Earth. But the speed of light going from here to Mars is a huge delay. So the question then becomes, how do you sync up a distributed network of computers that are helping process transactions without a central middleman across such vast distances? The answer to that question isn't simple, but there are people that are trying to solve that.